marginal costing, profit statement. We've already spoken about absorption costing, where we mentioned that every cost or expense incurred by the business is spread over a unit of the product or a job service being rendered. So with marginal costing, we look at a system whereby we only charge the variable cost to the product. That means that the fixed cost will be charged in totality to the profit statement. Unlike the absorption costing whereby the fixed overheads are apportioned onto the quantity of products manufactured. So when we talk about variable costing, we are looking at the cost of producing an extra unit of a product because the fixed cost is static. The variable on the other hand moves with production levels. So if you produce 10, your cost will be at a certain level. If you produce 20, it will increase. So when we want to calculate the variable cost, we have to look at the cost of direct materials, that of direct labor, variable production overheads. That will give us the marginal cost of a unit of a product. Let's look at the importance of marginal costing. The first is that we are able to determine the variable cost the business has incurred with the volume of the production. So as you increase the cost that you're going to incur will be ascertained. So you're able to know how much you are spending with the increased production that you have decided to embark on. Secondly, it is very crucial to break even analysis. Now because the fixed costs are static, it is the variable cost that is going to enable you to know the level of production to get to to be able to recoup the investment made in the production process. Because the more you produce, the more cost you incur. The fixed cost has little to offer in this analysis. Third is that contribution of each product forms the foundation of profitability. So when you have two or more products or departments and you want to assess their importance or viability to the business, it is the contribution that will do that. And lastly, you're able to value finished products and work in progress very well because you only deal with items or expenses that the business incurred in the process of bringing those products into that stage. Unlike the absorption costing where you have to add certain costs that might not be related, especially when you are moving them the unsold portion into the subsequent years. Let's now talk about contribution. Now, this is the difference between selling price and all variable costs. So when I talk about variable costs, it includes production and non-production. So as an illustration, when you have the selling price, you less variable production cost. You then less variable non-production cost. The total when subtracted from the selling price gives you the contribution. So when you take the fixed cost from the contribution, you now get the profit. Let's test our understanding. So GOPLC produces one product, bed. A bed is budgeted to require 5 kg of wood at $3 per kilogram, 4 hours of labor at $5 per hour, and variable production overheads of $3 per unit. Monthly fixed production overheads are budgeted to be $50,000, and average monthly production is also estimated to be 50,000 units. The selling price is fixed at $50 per unit, and there's also a variable selling cost of $3 per unit a monthly fixed selling cost of 3000 as well. So during the first two months, GOPLC expects the following level of activity. For production, January will be 60,000, February will be 50,000 units, sales will be 55,000 units for January and 53,000 units for February. All other results were as budgeted. So we have to prepare a cost card using marginal costing and also prepare the profit statement for the two months, that is January and February. So we move into the solution. We'll start with a material, which is $15, 5 kg required for the production of the bed times $3 per kilogram. Labor, $20, 4 hours needed, going for $5 per hour. The variable production overhead as stated in the question is $3. Then the marginal cost will be the summation of the three. $38. It's in brackets because we will be lessening it from the selling price. The selling price is $50. The variable selling expenses, which is the non-production, was stated in the question as 3, will lead to a contribution of $9.
and we come to the profit statement, we'll start with the sales, 2750000 for January, which is the $50 selling price per unit multiplied by the sold units, 55000 February will be two million six hundred and fifty thousand fifty dollars per unit multiplied by the amount sold fifty three thousand units. We come to the cost of sales. Opening there was none for January. For February it was one ninety thousand dollars. That is the marginal cost of thirty eight dollars by the difference of the production units in January and the sales five thousand. Then we add the materials for January. Because it was supposed to produce 60,000, each unit needed $15 per unit. So that would give $900,000. For February, it will be $750,000. That is the 50,000 units budgeted to be produced times the value of the material, $15. For labor, we will get $1.2 million for January. That is the 60,000 multiplied by the $20. For February, it will be $1 million. That is the $20 for labor multiplied by the total production needed. Then we will come to the variable overheads. It was $3 stated in the question, multiplied by the amount of production to be made, 60,000, leading to $180,000. February will be $150,000. That is $3 times the 50,000 units to be produced. We now come to less the closing stock. So it is the 5,000 left, the difference between the production and the sales for January, we multiply it with the marginal cost that will give one ninety thousand dollars. In February, they produce fifty thousand, had five thousand coming from January, making fifty five thousand, but they were only able to sell fifty three thousand. So there were two thousand units of inventory left. Multiplying it by the marginal cost of thirty eight dollars, you will get seventy six thousand dollars. So here we less it from the calculations done so far, the variables for the cost of sales that will give us marginal profit of six hundred and sixty thousand for january six hundred and thirty six thousand dollars for february when we list the cost of sales from the sales we now move on to subtract the variable selling overheads which is the non-production it is one sixty five thousand dollars for january that is the fifty five thousand dollars sales multiplied by the variable selling cost per unit three dollars we will get one fifty nine thousand dollars for february 53,000 units multiplied by three dollars that will give the contribution of 495,000 dollars for february will also be 477,000 dollars mind you we could have just picked the contribution that we got the nine dollars from the cost card and multiply it by the sales it's supposed to give us this figure so we bring the fixed expenses in order to get to the profit so the fixed production overhead is fifty thousand dollars as stated in the question for both months the fixed selling is three thousand also stated which will lead to the profit of four hundred and forty two thousand dollars for january four hundred and twenty four thousand dollars for february working this and the absorption costing will provide a totally different figure we'll get to that reconciling marginal and absorption costing the fixed cost per unit on the difference between the opening and the closing units for a period will account for the difference between the marginal and the absorption. So using the same example for geo producing beds, we'll start with calculating the cost cut and the absorption costing. So this will be the material $15 as established earlier, five kilograms times $3, labor $20, variable production overheads of three. Now we come to the fixed overheads, $1. You had that by dividing the fixed expenses of fifty thousand dollars by the fifty thousand budgeted production we come to the production cost the summation giving thirty nine dollars now when we take that from the selling price of fifty we will get profit of eleven so when we come to the profit statement and the absorption costing we will skip all those sessions where we calculated the sales and less the cost of sales from it so we'll just jump straight into the standard profit which is six hundred and five thousand for january which is the profit of eleven dollars multiplied by the quantity sold 55,000 February will be 583,000 dollars 11 times 53,000 then we now deal with under or over absorption for January there will be an over absorption of 10,000 dollars this is because 
the business budgeted producing 50,000. That was what formed the basis of spreading the production overheads of the $50,000. So if they produce 60,000, it means that the extra 10 did not bear the fixed production overhead, meaning that will be a plus to the business. We now come to layer the fixed overheads. We start with the production, 165,000 for January. That is the $3 selling expenses times the 55,000 sales. 159 for February, $3 times 53,000 sales. Then we come to the fixed selling expenses, which is a 3,000 for both months. This will give a net profit of 447,000 for January, 421,000 for February. So when we come to the reconciliation, you realize that the profit and the absorption costing is 447,000 for January, 421,000 for February. And the marginal costing is 442,000 for January, 424,000 for February. For January, the difference of 5,000 came in. This is because there was no opening balance and the closing balance was 5,000. When you come to February, the difference is 3,000 minus. This is because they had an opening balance of 5,000 and a closing balance of 2,000. Difference being 3,000. Multiply by the fixed absorption cost of $1, you'll give the 3,000. 